Today, I'll be sharing 10 items I no longer buy. If this has you curious to find out what items these are, then keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, My Extraordinary Ordinary. My name is Danielle and today I'll be sharing with you 10 items that I no longer buy. I really enjoy watching videos like this because it gives me some inspiration and ideas on things I'm buying that I might not need to buy. Some of the items on my list today come from videos that I've watched similar to this one and I'm hoping that this will inspire you to look at your own buying habits and really consider whether the things you're buying are things you really want to be buying, are they things that you really need or want to be spending money on, and maybe this will help you save some money and save some time as you consider some things that you're currently buying. So with Without further ado, let's get started. Now I've ranked my list starting with number 10 and we'll work our way down to the number one item on my list in regards to the amount of money that not buying the item on the list will end up saving me. Starting off with number 10 on my list, number 10 is drinks at restaurants. When I go out to eat at a restaurant, I simply order water and I typically ask for lemon or lime to go with my water, but that's what I have to drink at restaurants when I go out to eat. Now the exception to this rule occasionally is ordering coffee at breakfast, but that is an exception that doesn't happen very often because usually I'll just drink coffee at home or coffee on my way to the restaurant. My husband and I are not alcohol drinkers, but when we did used to have an occasional drink with dinner, this was still a rule we stuck to when we would go out to dinner because alcohol, when you order it at a restaurant, is really expensive. Number nine on my list is sort of similar to number 10 on my list, and we found that this practice saved us a lot of money and made us healthier at home, and that is simply buying drinks at home. We don't buy any drinks at home like juice or soda. When we're at home we drink chap water and we drink coffee in the morning and that is basically it. Now the exception to this rule may be on holidays or birthdays but generally speaking we don't consume those items at home and this was a practice that I started when my kids were young and I was a single mom. I didn't have money to buy juice or soda and as a certified personal trainer I didn't really want my kids drinking those things anyway so I adopted the practice when my kids were young that we just drank water at home and this did a wonderful thing for our family this really helped give my kids a craving and a taste for water and they were very happy to drink water whenever they were thirsty and this is such a healthy habit. Number eight on my list is specialty coffee drinks. About four years ago, I was going to Starbucks consistently about three to five times a week to buy coffee drinks in the morning, like on my way to work or on my way to an appointment and it was just a habit that I had. I really enjoyed it. I love coffee drinks. Even though this is something I don't buy anymore, I really do enjoy them. And I was doing this consistently probably for at least a year, and it wasn't until I had an experience where my debit card was compromised, and I really had to go through my checking account in detail to let the bank know which charges were fraudulent and which charges were mine. When I started to do this for the month, that's when I saw and I realized how much money I was spending on coffee drinks through the drive through every single week and I was shocked. I think this is something that a lot of people spend quite a bit of money on and they don't realize that they spend the money on this on a weekly or monthly basis. The other thing that I realized is that coffee drinks contain a lot of sugar, they're very fattening, and we all know that you can't order the smallest size because you get like three sips and the smallest cup so it's not even worth it. So if you're like me and you're going through the drive through to get specialty coffee drinks multiple times a week, chances are you're spending anywhere from 30 to $60 a week just on coffee drinks alone. And a lot of times when I do that, I'd realize I want a little snack or I want some breakfast. So sometimes that Starbucks order could be closer to 15 to $20 if I'm getting something to eat along with my coffee drink. And it was just a lot of money that I wasn't paying attention to that I didn't realize I was spending. And from that time on, I realized I'm done. I don't wanna spend my money on this because for me, I found it to be a waste of money and I also found it to be highly, highly unhealthy. So that's the reason that I no longer buy coffee drinks. Number seven on my list is online subscriptions. I no longer do any online subscriptions with the exception of a couple things. I recently filmed a video where I talked about how to save money when you shop and in that video I referenced taking the class Financial Peace University. This class really helped me to more closely look at my finances and really dig deeper 
and look at what I was spending, I did take a look at all of my online subscriptions and I realized that a lot of these weren't actually saving me that much money. It was maybe a couple dollars here and there, it was maybe a shipping charge, but it wasn't really worth it because a lot of times I was getting these subscriptions at intervals that came faster than what I actually needed the product. And so I had more product than I was actually using and it was causing me also to not pay as close attention to my finances as I really wanted to and needed to. So I ended up canceling almost all of them with the exception of a couple of vitamin subscriptions. And I think subscriptions also are kind of a sneaky way that we can spend money and lose control of our budget without realizing it. So I encourage you, if you like to use a lot of subscriptions or you have a lot of subscriptions that are online, take a look at those subscriptions and really evaluate whether these are products that you are actively using, whether you have too much of this product at the current time and maybe you can pause or cancel a subscription that you have because I really think that this will help you save a lot of money. Number six on my list is extended warranties. Many times when you buy any sort of electronic device or any power device, it will ask you, even if you purchase it on Amazon now, if you wanna buy the extended warranty. There's a lot of conditions around an extended warranty much of the time, meaning that if an item breaks or if you have a problem with an item, that it has to meet certain criteria to be eligible for the extended warranty to kick in and cover the product. And a lot of times the damage or the breakage isn't covered within the conditions of the extended warranty. And a lot of times the product itself might not even be expensive enough to warranty buying additional coverage. So as a family, that's just not something that we do. My husband's really handy. So if something breaks, we usually just have him look at it. And if he can fix it, he'll fix it. Otherwise we just replace the product. Number five on my list are cleaning supplies and kitchen appliances that are not multi-purpose. Now, this was something that I took from another video like this that I watched. Someone else talked about this, and when I thought about what she said, it made a lot of sense. A few years ago, I was definitely a person that would get sucked into all the online and social media ads advertising these one-hit wonder products in the kitchen, and they always advertise their products to be amazing, incredible, and you can't live without them. And I will admit, I always fell for it, and I would order these products hoping that they would make my cooking experiences simpler and easier and totally changed my life as they had promised. But in reality, what ended up happening many times is that the item would get shoved into the back of a cupboard or a cabinet or I'd lose a piece that I needed to use the item when it was put away or I just didn't feel like pulling it out and using it for that one specific purpose and then cleaning it and having to put it away because it was just too much work to do all of that. So all these items I bought never got used and in addition, they ended up kind of cluttering up my kitchen and my cupboards and my cabinets and taking up a ton of space. So last year when I was really trying to simplify and downsize, I just got rid of all these items. Another example of this is that we had an air fryer on our kitchen countertop for the longest time along with a manual four slice toaster and the air fryer was a large appliance and it didn't look really great on our countertop. Now we did use it quite a bit. The boys and my husband used it multiple times a week. I used the toaster quite a bit. So those two appliances were getting a good amount of use. But in the beginning of the year, we got rid of both of those appliances and we bought an appliance that can be used as a toaster oven, as a convection oven, and an air fryer that is smaller than the air fryer that we had and looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing on our countertop. And I'm really happy to have that item. We use that item even more than we used the old air fryer and toaster combined because it can do so many other functions and we really enjoy having it. The same concept could apply to my cleaning supplies. I used to have kitchen and bathroom cabinets full of tons of different supplies for every little different thing I wanted to clean. And what I realized is that white vinegar, a little bit of dish soap and very hot water, this is an awesome way to clean your kitchen floors. And it's non-toxic and it's very inexpensive. We also invested in a steamer and that is something we use for a lot of heavy duty cleaning. It's completely all natural, it's just hot steam. And although we had to invest in buying the steamer up front, it has saved us a lot of money in the long run and it allows us to clean really difficult areas to clean or really heavily soiled areas without the use of harsh or toxic chemicals, without having to breathe in 
things that don't smell good or cause you issues with breathing or cause issues with allergies, which myself and my son do have. So that's really been a benefit. And I've just found that investing in multi-purpose products and appliances for our family works really well. It saves us money, it saves us time, and it also saves us counter and covered space. Number four on my list is jewelry. Now in saying this, what I'm saying is that I no longer want to purchase jewelry for myself. Now the reason for this is twofold. The first reason is that I'm really looking to simplify my life and simplify my decision making process unless it's a really important decision that I do have to take time to think about and really consider. I don't want to spend a lot of time making decisions that should be relatively simple and not complicated like what I'm going to wear or what jewelry I'm going to put on. The second reason for this decision is because I really find that I'm reaching for the same jewelry pieces all the time lately. It's either the studs that I have in my ear currently or a pair of gold hoops and I wear the same rings all the time. I wear my wedding ring and then a few rings that my husband had bought me for Christmas and Valentine's Day that are an anniversary band along with two gold bands and the necklace that I'm wearing currently is the necklace that I've been reaching for every day that I wear a necklace. It's from my sons. It was a gift to me on Mother's Day. I have two teenage boys and they gifted me a beautiful necklace that they picked out by themselves. It came in a beautiful rosewood box that lit up when I opened it and it talked all about the bond between mothers and sons and how it's eternal and everlasting and how appreciative they are to have me as their mom and it's adjustable I love it and because they gifted it to me on Mother's Day it's sentimental and it's something that I want to wear because it reminds me of them every time I wear it the other ring that I reached for when I wear silver is a ring that was given to me by my mom for my 18th birthday it's a family heirloom ring that's made up of platinum and diamonds it's very unique as you can see and that's the ring I wear when I wear silver jewelry in general is just not something I plan to buy for myself. Now, if I would get it as a gift from a loved one, I'd love to receive that. I think that that's still a great gift. Although I own a lot of jewelry, this current routine I have with my jewelry is making me really happy and really simplifying my life, and that's why I've decided I don't want to purchase any more jewelry. Number three on my list is shoes and new clothing. Now, the reason for not buying any more shoes is because, as some of you may know if you watch some of my other videos, I am disabled. I have cerebral palsy that affects my left side, and I am going through some things with my left foot. I am getting a brace at the end of the month, and I will have to buy different shoes to accommodate the brace. So unfortunately, a lot of the shoes I currently own won't really work with the brace, so I'm not buying any shoes until I know what I need to accommodate the brace that I'll be getting. And as far as the new clothing, there's nothing in my wardrobe right now that I feel like I really need. And if there is something that I want to buy or I feel like I would need, I've really been enjoying going to rummage sales, consignment shops, or thrift shops because this is a great way to get items at a much lower cost and especially those items that are trendy or that are things that you might not wear long term, this is, I feel, a great way to shop and I think it's a lot of fun. And when the time comes that these items are no longer of interest to me, maybe they don't fit me anymore or they go out of style or I just don't feel like wearing them anymore, because I didn't spend a lot of money on them, I don't feel bad when I redonate them and they're able to bring someone else joy. Now I only have two items left on this list and I do think the last two items will really surprise a lot of you who know me, but as I said, I'm really interested in not only saving more money, but also simplifying my life and not being wasteful. I want to use the things that I own if they're items or products that I can use. I really want to make sure I do that. And so number two on my list is health and beauty items, including makeup and hand lotion. Again, this was an item that I saw on another YouTuber's list when I watched a similar video. And what she said was that she went through all of her health and beauty items and her makeup and she saw that she had a lot of things that needed to be used up and she was really committed to using all of the items that she had before she repurchased new items. And I went through all of my things too and realized that I do have quite a bit of makeup and I have a lot of health and beauty items that I haven't completely used up. I I have my eye on a brand new skincare line that I want to try as soon as I use up all my items, but I don't want to waste the items that I have because a lot of the skincare that I've purchased in the past was expensive. It was really nice and instead of just getting bored and moving on, I want to use what I have and if something isn't serving me or working for me, I'm going to just toss it and move on, but I want to either get rid of things that I no longer can use or that are old or not working for me or use the items that I have before I buy any new product. 
I think this one will be a little bit of a challenge for me. I just decided this recently a couple weeks ago. I have been sticking to it. This also includes lipstick and I really love sometimes buying lipstick and seasonal colors or different brands when they come out with new things but I'm going to really try to stick to this and just use what I have until it's gone before I invest in new product. Now if you're still here and you've been waiting for me to reveal the top thing on my list, number one, that has saved me the most amount of money, here it is. It is hair appointments, hair styling products, and hair styling tools. Let me know in the comments below if you're surprised by this. I think a lot of you might be. So I've been coloring my hair for well over 20 years and I've been getting highlights in my hair for well over a decade. That's just been the routine that I've had with my hair. And I was getting my hair cut and getting these appointments done probably every eight to 10 weeks or so for well over the past decade. And these hair appointments were running me anywhere from $250 to $300 per appointment for everything that I needed done. And that's not including the tip to the stylist. I've always really taken good care of my hair and really tried to keep it looking nice. But over the past year or so, I've realized how much money I've been spending on my hair. And I really decided that I didn't wanna spend that kind of money on my hair anymore. And I also, like I said before, wanted to simplify my routine and not be spending so much time on my hair either. So about six months ago, I talked with two different hairstylists and they told me about two clients they had that were Asian, that were around my age, maybe slightly older, that allowed themselves to go completely gray. And they said that while the process was kind of painful as they were growing their hair out, once it was completely gray, it was beautiful. And now these clients get a lot of compliments on their hair and they really enjoy just having their hair be its natural color. It tends to turn kind of a silvery color. And I've seen Asian women that have let themselves go completely gray. And I agree, it is really stunning. It is really beautiful. And I made a decision that I was gonna just go ahead and do that. Now, let me tell you, before I made that decision, not only was I spending that amount of money that I shared with you on hair appointments, but I was also buying styling tools flat irons, curling wands, expensive blow dryers, and I was buying styling products like hairspray and mousses and gels, and I was also investing money in hair supplements, vitamins I was taking and serums I was using to keep my hair from going gray. And I will say that the product I was using was working fantastic. It did help me stretch my hair appointments out longer because I wasn't going gray as fast, but it was pricey. I would say I was spending about $60 a month on these supplements in addition to all these other things I was buying to get my hair to be the way that I wanted it to be. So I decided not only was I going to let my hair grow out, stop coloring it, and stop buying supplements to keep my hair from growing gray, but I was going to stop using any heat styling products on my hair altogether with the exception of special occasions. The other thing that I've done to save money and time is I've gotten into a routine where I now only wash my hair once a week. And that is with teaching cycle classes three times a week where I'm getting fairly sweaty doing high intensity workouts. I have trained my hair to only need to be washed once a week. There's a specific process I followed to do this. If you wanna know how that process worked for me and how I did that, let me know in the comments below and I'll certainly be happy to share that in a video, but I'm really happy now because my hair routine is very low maintenance, my hair is really healthy, and it barely takes me any time to style my hair at all, and I'm saving a ton of money. I went from spending anywhere from $250 to $300 plus every eight to 10 weeks to spending about $32 every six months on a haircut. And I'm not kidding, that's what I'm currently doing. And I'm so, so happy that I made this decision. And this is definitely one of the things that I've cut out of my spending and I no longer buy that saves me the most amount of money personally. So there you have it. That's my list of the top 10 things I no longer buy. Let me know in the comments below. Were any of the items that you no longer buy on my list? And are there any additional items that you no longer buy? And have you found that it has helped you save money and save time? I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. And remember to make your everyday ordinary life extraordinary.